Hey there, this is Megatrain, and I'm recording a quick um, Minecraft Redstone video in response to uh, a contest I found online. Uh, this is at the Code Golf Stack Exchange, um, uh, which is a programming contest site, and this week they had a um, random color pixels uh, challenge. And most everybody with uh, who's sane is uh, using normal programming languages, but I'm going to try this uh, in Minecraft. Uh, so the rules are that I have to output um, random colors. Uh, in my case, I'm using uh, the 16 available colors of wool that are in Minecraft. Um, the screen output has to be at least 40 by 40 pixels. In our case, we're going to be um, displaying those in literal blocks. And um, it has to actually um, complete the map uh, in under three minutes. So uh, ours actually gets um, pretty close to that. So let me show you uh, what I've done here. In Minecraft, I've created um, a empty new test world using the redstone ready uh, preset and um, given myself a structure block. So a structure block in Minecraft allows you to save and load um, structures that you've created. So that's exactly um, what I've done here. Let me pop over to my uh, save folder and uh, in my structures folder I've created one called ram random pixels .nbt. If I look at the properties um, this is exactly 4,355 bytes. Uh, that is my golf score, uh, which isn't that great compared to most other programming languages, but um, considering I'm dealing with Minecraft, um, I think that's actually pretty good. So I'm going to copy this whole structures folder from um, the save that I used to create it into my brand new test world and paste it in here. And again, the structure is called random underscore pixels. So I can take my structure block, switch it to load mode, and call it random underscore pixels. It does need to load entities. And we will load it up. So our um, my mechanism here basically operates in two pieces. Uh, these two lines on the left help set everything up. That's like um, booting my computer or maybe compiling my program, however you want to think about it. So I'm not counting that inside my three minute, li three minute limit. And uh, this mess over on the right hand side actually is what randomizes the pixels on the output. So let me um, first of all give myself a um, uh, give p map give myself a map item so that we can see some of this stuff happening and I'm going to start my process here. So the first thing that it does is it gives me a um, big stone rectangle and you can see that it's starting to put stuff in the middle of it. So it's creating a grid of what in Minecraft are called armor stands. Um, armor stands, um, you can literally put armor on them if you want, but for our use, uh, they serve kind of a unique purpose. The, the problem that we have in Minecraft, uh, we can do a lot of stuff. We can teleport around, um, teleport me to negative 10, uh, 70, negative... 20, I can use my X, Y, Z coordinates to do things, but I can't, uh, I can't put variables inside there. So Minecraft actually does have some ways to store values um, using what's called the scoreboard. I'm not actually using the scoreboard, but the trick that the, the armor stand allows us to do is it allows us to basically perform an action at a certain location. And if we zip over here, you can see actually what's happening is that there's one armor stand at the very front of this line that's kind of doing our work for us, um, that we're actually following that's creating the other, mine, uh, the other armor stands. So let me show you what the code actually looks like here real quick. So the very first thing that happens is that we summon a brand new armor stand, we give it a specific name. So a custom name of A, and in that case, um, that's going to be what we refer to during the rest of the setup process, and it's going to do um, the rest of our work. 
So uh, these next two blocks just make our stone outline. So this uh, fills uh, hard coded uh, coordinates there and it fills the center with air. So we're just left with a ring. And finally, uh, this creates a redstone block at the at the front of the next line to start the next portion of the code. So a redstone block in Minecraft is a power source. So as long as this redstone block is here, this uh, purple block is going to repeat. So this is a repeat type block. And until this redstone block disappears, um, it's going to continue to execute this command. So what we have here is um, kind of the bulk. Uh, what's doing the main work we're executing a certain command at a location. So the location is at an entity with a name of A. So we've created that armor stand with a name of A, and we're gonna execute a new summon at that location. So we summon a brand new armor stand just to one side of the existing armor stand. And then of course, the next block, we just move that armor stand one over. So it just keeps moving over and over and over again. A redstone block disappeared. That means that our setup is complete. Uh, before we go on to the main cycle, let me finish this process here. So these next two blocks here um, handle what happens at the end of the row. So we do uh, a test for block. So just to the one side of our, um, our armor stand A, we're going to do a test for block. If we find stone there, then the next uh, block will execute. So you can see the, the icon on the outside is a little bit different here. And this one is set to conditional. So it'll only execute if the prior one was successful. So when we hit the X end of the row, it's going to teleport us back 40 blocks uh, instead of just going on to the next. Same thing here. Uh, when we hit the very last row, we test for block in the Z direction. And if that's successful, then we get rid of the redstone block. We replace it with air. So our command stops looping. And finally, we kill our hardworking armor stand A. Um, so he's not causing us uh, not in the grid anymore. So after all that's done, we're left with a 40 by 40 grid of armor stands. So now we actually need to start doing something with that. So that's what the rest of this stuff does. Uh, very quickly, here's the guts of, of what makes this work. Um, each of these wool types has a command here that allow that, um, again, we've seen the execute before, but this next part. This add R finds a random entity of type armor stand. That's across the entire field, the 40 by 40 grid, and all this, also these extra entities that are standing up here. So it finds a random armor stand and it puts a wool block above its head. So it does a set block of wool, a wool without a number after it is a white wool. A wool with a number after it is our 16 different colors, uh, our 15 remaining colors. So zero through 15, basically. So all of these, uh, these wool colors are represented here. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to randomly choose a color before that block randomly chooses a location to place it. And that's what this star does. So this one will randomly choose one of the close by armor stands. So this R equals nine is specifically just for the uh, radius of nine around these command blocks. So any of the close by command uh, armor stands that it finds, it'll do a set block, not of wool, but it'll, of a redstone block. So basically, um, underneath each of these, it'll put a redstone block down here, which will trigger um, the wool placement. It'll also trigger this set block that just clears it back out. So let me turn it on here to get the process going. And you can see, see these things start to flash redstone blocks underneath here. And we start to see wool blocks being created randomly above all of these armor stands. So we can see them, uh, we can see them live, visually. Um, sometimes uh, my computer's gonna lag, my screen's not gonna update quite as quickly as it might on a more powerful system. Or I can pull up my map 
and we can look at it there. So I've timed it a few times. It actually takes right about three minutes to complete the whole thing. And of course, it'll continue going as long uh, as we allow it to go. But this is my, uh, this is my entry into the, um, uh, the G Code Golf uh, Challenge um, on Stack Exchange using command blocks in Minecraft. So uh, we'll let that run if you're interested in seeing that further. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, this is Megatrain signing off.